<laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, so wait, while they're in my head. Um, they're telling us to choose to see beauty and to see, um, to create the imprint of beautiful experiences on the planet. Now that's not in denial of what's happening. So um, if they want me to give an example, um, some years ago when the movie Yaya Sisterhood was out, um, my youngest and my parents and I were going and a friend of mine joined us. Boy, back in the days when we could meet friends and go to the movies and then out to dinner. <laughs> So we went to the movie, and I thought it was such a beautiful movie. I cried. I cried. I laughed. I laughed. I cried. It really affected me. And my parents, you know, my child, we were all like, wow, what a great movie. And then um, when we were leaving the theater and we we're going to eat, my friend who came was so angry. She was like, how dare you? take me to see such a horrible movie. And we're like, what do you mean? That was the best movie. And she said, oh my God, that ungrateful girl and her crazy mother. And then all those old women are forcing her to like see her mother for something and denying her relationship with her mother saying, you have to only accept your mother from her perspective. You don't get to see her from your perspective. And she was just like, she hated the film. She was so angry. So there we had been sitting side by side and there were a group of us that were having this like wonderful experience. And there was another person who was having a terrible experience. And God, years later, she and I were talking and she said, um, you know, you're so toxic for me. You're so bad for me. And we're like, Okay, I'm not used to people calling me toxic, but um, why? And she said, because you keep forcing me to do all these terrible things that make me feel bad. I was like, what are you talking about? She said, you remember when we saw Yaya Sisterhood? I went, yeah. And I felt really sorrowful that I loved that movie and you hated that movie. And I wish we had found like a movie that you would have enjoyed instead. And she said, and then you forced me. And she started listing all these events that we'd been to. Um, Holy Fest, like every event that we'd been to, like amazing events, weekends, camping by waterfalls, every event that I thought was really amazing, she thought was terrible. So here we are side by side, living in many ways the same life yet they're completely different lives, completely different experiences. And these different experiences put our response to them affects our bodies. It affects our health. It affects our emotional well-being, our psychological well-being, our physical well-being, our energetic connection well-being. And... I don't think of myself as a toxic person and I do try to connect with the people I love through love and caring. She only saw very toxic energy from me and everyone that I was connected with, my family, friends when we were doing group events. So, what the librarians are saying is we can't necessarily control what's happening around us, but we can always manage our connection to everything. And the energy that we bring to it can have a more profound effect than we think. I'm not going to speak about my friend's life, but I can tell you I have a happier, healthier life, I think. Um, 
And I can't say it's because I get all the lucky breaks because we were doing everything together. And certainly my life has not been like charmed. I've had more than my share of difficult karmic lessons as the librarians like to call it. I've had more than my share of challenges. And as they very kindly mentioned, I fall on my face a lot and get up and pick the gravel out of my skin and go forward with life and fall on my face a lot and put my foot in my mouth. So I am as highly flawed, like they mentioned, as anyone else. But because I choose to find, let's clean everything else and connect through the highest frequency we can find and bring that energy in, I often find myself surrounded by amazing people who are doing amazing things. And that does have an effect. So if we are feeling overwhelmed by what's happening on the planet, the librarians say it's your choice if you wanna have a small effect on the planet or just connect or have a global effect. It doesn't matter because there's room for everyone with what you naturally connect with. But if you are connecting with thoughts of healing and love and growth and evolution, it will have an effect. It absolutely will one internal and one external. And it will help others to have an effect. So that is how we reclaim our planet. Yeah. Find your path with faith and love and travel it and know that if it's your path, no one else can dictate to you what your path is supposed to be. You'll know you're on your path because it feels absolutely right. Maybe a little frightening sometimes, but it feels right. We've reached a point on our planet where nothing is going to be what it was. And that is the state of our planet, you know, like we're not walking with dinosaurs right now. You know, so there have been lives, civilizations rising and falling, rising, falling, rising and falling for, you know, millions and billions of years. But each of us, most of us thought we kind of knew what our life path would be based on the way the planet presented itself. And the planet is shifting. For some people, this is really terrifying you know, <laughs> for all of us. For the young people, this can be really overwhelming. For people who are like teenagers and in their early 20s, this can be a terrifying time because they're getting ready to start their lives. So helping young people right now to feel like they have a path forward, that is a really good way to start. I always think of what the librarian said a while back regarding, uh, you know, your actions, as you mentioned, sending love forward or helping out in any way we can, that you suddenly there's a different timeline mm -hmm. that you go on. So you're on a trajectory and then you go on a different timeline. So what has been expected to happen doesn't necessarily happen against the odds. Yes. Yeah. You got it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like uh, in the old days, I used to say, if there's a man in the middle of the time uh, square or, or town square who is about to shoot someone, I choose not to be there. That's not my reality. Yeah. You know, so your reality is what you make of it, because as, 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 be, as a being of consciousness, we can create our own realities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like I said, they said, timelines. And those realities are different timelines. Mm -hmm. I'm just finding that myself, it, I don't know, those words that Jesus spoke had really resonated and it's really touched my heart. And I feel changed in a lot of ways. I was already, like, when I go out, I'm always very, very courteous and very loving to, like, especially people who are working very hard in 
stores and things. But I'm um, even more so, like, I make a point to make somebody laugh every day, mm -hmm. you know, and that's just my pleasure, you know, or someone who's having a, a hard time, I, I see in their face and I try to, you know, that bubbliness that they talked about and also the embrace of, the embracing thing that Jesus had spoken about. The good, the bad, the ugly, just embrace it all because it exists. That is so powerful. It is. It's also, yeah. Only because it exists. Doesn't matter. Don't judge it. Just love it because it's there for you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I can't tell you how often uh, someone will come to me for a past life reading. And um, so imagine someone who's got like a good career, good secure life, you know, good income, owns a house, cars, married to someone they love, they have a stable life. And I'll do these past life readings like, okay, here's one where you were a slave, you were beaten, this and that happened. Here's another one where, you know, you uh, were nomadic and it was a very difficult life. You know, here's one where you were a poor fishing person, like, Here's one where you were, uh, you know, a street urchin and, you know, like if you look back in history, every single person who lived, be they pirates or slaves or like murderers or whatever, we've experienced those lives. So if you look back on your past lives, you've each of you, me, all of us, we've had some very, very difficult past lives. There's no question. That's part of the process of incarnation. So I'll be reading all these lives. And then when we're done, this person was like, wow, that was a rough life. Wow, that life sucked. And oh, that was a fun life or whatever. And then they'll go, I can't tell you how often they'll say to me with this like raw pain but why is it that this life is so hard? Now, this person has like a home, a job, a family, everything should be easy because like they got it all. They're not a slave. They're not like freezing to death. They're not like, you know, trampled by wild animals or eaten by a bear or whatever, but they feel so much pain in this life. And when we explore it, um, it's because they're not honoring their life path. Yeah. You know, and I think it comes to what the librarians call arrogance, which is, I think it was just as being disconnected from spirit for whatever yes. reason. Yes. Um, they don't, I don't know if they understand that people don't always choose to be disconnected from spirit. They but I think that's what they're talking about, disconnected from spirit. And when I talk with this person about what would make them feel happy, it's usually really more about a, um, an esoteric or artistic or a spiritual thing. They might love their job, love their spouse, love their home, love their vacation house, love their car, love their life, but they don't feel happy. They feel a lot of anxiety, a lot of pressure, because they're lacking the connection, which is unique for each of us. Some people, their spiritual connection is to the universe. Others is to God. Others is to an ancient spirit or another collective or another dimension or just the magic of Earth. So I think for each of us to honor that within ourself will really help with these other lessons that the librarians were talking about of just like finishing up our karmic lessons so that we can not be triggered. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you, Bonita. Well, but Bonita, I wanted to say just thank you for sharing the story of your friend. It strikes me as exceptional and so different from what probably most people on earth experience as part of a, a friendship experiences. 
and uh, something that defines you, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing, in, or separates you from the rest of the universe. But in any <laughs> case, it's something I'm going to think about a lot, and thanks for sharing. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. And, but we have the choice. We have the choice. I think my friend was carrying around a lot of karmic lessons that were just being triggered. And they, for that reason, she was choosing to deprive herself just fun, joy. And uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, and then she was blaming you for it because mm -hmm. you were the closest person to her. Yeah. Yeah, you'd be amazed how many people blame me for their issues. <laughs> 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 but and listen i'm sure i'm speaking to like kindred people on this because if you have insight if you're empathic or psychic or intuitive or if you see people's potential or their life path then you also see where they are at the moment it makes them feel vulnerable and if you give them insights that they did not that they know but they're denying to themselves they're going to get mad they're going to blame you yeah very interesting thank you yeah. Yeah, that's helpful yeah that's you know you guys ask me to keep giving my visions of what's happening i'm like every time i do i get so much hate mail <laughs> please stop asking me to tell the visions of the future because people get really mad at me and then the visions come true and then they're even more mad at me so that's okay <laughs> that's like you said they need to look in within themselves to mm -hmm. find out what is triggered in them yes yes well, if you want to know what my visions are, just wait a year or two. You'll see them. <laughs> <laughs> a year or two? <laughs> you share with us. <laughs> you know, remember what, uh, what Nancy, what you were saying about timelines. Yeah, there's two ways I see timelines and Kim and I have really been looking, researching alternative timelines. One way is before we're born, we contract like the different timelines that we want to experience in a life. So there are each of us has parallel lives that are exploring different aspects of the same karmic lessons. If you say, in this life, I'm going to work on blankety blank, you're going to work on it from multiple perspectives in multiple timelines simultaneously. And then when you all die, when all of the lives die, you come back together and it's you, you know, or me, but with the collective understanding and knowledge of all of these timelines and then anything that was left undone then you're going to have to work on in another timeline in another life there is also whenever you make a choice it creates splits in timelines which may then run parallel to each other or it may be a split in a timeline one of those splits will choose to join one of the already existing parallel timelines or they may join back up, you know, just like when you're walking on a path and there's a little trail that goes off and it meets again. So there's a lot of subtleties and resonance to all of these timelines. They all end up kind of in the same place at the end. It's our choice how difficult or easy we choose for our, each of us, our timelines to be. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That's good to know because then you could work out all. It's like looking at the problem, mm -hmm. and looking at it at different angles, you know, and uh, and then merging it all together, and you have like. That's good to know. Yeah. Thanks. Um, Bonita, one. I'm sorry. No. One quick question, and before you go, I know it's time, but um, is it possible? Like I've noticed a lot of really strange cloud formations that are not normal cloud formations. And I wonder if at some point the librarians on a different 
future time could address the cloud formations? Well, part of it is there's more moisture in the atmosphere. Yeah, but I'm talking about very bizarre yeah, angles and that. not not the round and fluffy and you know just very bizarre cloud formations. Yeah, you're right. I've noticed that too lately or last few years. Yeah, me too. But just the last few months. Yeah, and last this, few months. Yeah, yeah. This is very definitely a global climate change phenomenon. Yeah. Um, because you're creating different temperatures in the atmosphere on up to the hemisphere, different elements in the oxygen, as well as different amounts of moisture. So that's going to have, you know, a huge effect on what the clouds, which is just collective moisture, is going to look like. Because there's going to be different air flows running through, and they have different chemicals. There are different chemical compositions. So yes, this is a global climate change phenomenon. And you know, just a heads up, the uh, ocean level, the sea level is going up one foot in the next 30 years. It's, if we don't stop, it's gonna be sooner than that. So don't buy beachfront property. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah, but no, that's a wonderful question. And um, if you do a Google on global climate change impact on clouds, you'll come up with some interesting, interesting things. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. um, I wish it was because there's more angels like hanging out. For <laughs> I wish, <laughs> but they are there. They are there. So they're, they're ready for us. So open up to your angels and they'll fill you instead. Fill your room. Angels love nothing more to than to be invited to fill the space of someone who is in like divine mode. And, you know, I have, we have, I've been with groups many times where like we look around the room and it's almost like we're in a cloud. We have so much angelic energy and there's like lights like we've even caught it on videotape in the past where you can see that like the angelic presence has just filled the room so give it a try <laughs> and, I and do that so, regularly. yeah i mean the more you receive the more receptive and open you are without thought of what will happen the more it just happens on its own. Yeah, going back to what you said, if you can't change it, manage your surrounding, change, you know. Could you imagine if we got like a billion people to meditate to bring in angels and surround them? That would have an effect on things. That would yeah. end everything. <laughs> <laughs> everything horrible. Uh, I'll see if we can do something to make that happen. <laughs> okay. Ask them, how can Sounds we good. do that? Yeah. All right. Well, have a wonderful day, everyone. Thanks, Bonita. You too. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Love you all. Bye-bye. Love you all.